our planet earth blesses us with many varieties of food different people have different food habits based on their geographic region religion culture and tradition unfortunately today because of certain systems laws policies and interests of a few people there are so many issues related to food that are increasing every single day and many of us are not even aware of these issues hence the conflict transformation team of the henry martin institute realized the need and conducted a 10 days workshop titled slow and fair food for peace from 15th to 24th january 2011 this was the first workshop organized by the henry martin institute that focused on the issues related to food. The Slow and Fair uh, Food for Peace uh, has a small background, a uh, very important background. Um, uh, several months ago before this workshop uh, uh, took place, um, back in the HMI residential place, uh, some of the staff were sitting together and talking about how wonderful it would be if um, uh, all people from different cultures can come together and cook their own traditional meal and for us to share uh, that, that food from uh, each other's context. Um, and this idea started evolving and we started talking about it more and the conflict transformation team uh, sat through, discussed about it uh, in our peace retreat and also in our team meetings and realized that um, this workshop is absolutely important. Uh, and not just uh, uh, where we come and cook our traditional food but also talk about food crisis that is affecting our planet. Uh, not just India but uh, several parts of the world affected by uh, a very deep food crisis. This workshop brought together participants from West Bengal, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Pondicherry, Sweden, Sri Lanka and UK. One of the reasons why we try to organize this workshop is to address the issues related to food security and also about uh, food sovereignty and uh, also worried about the quality of food and uh, its impact on health. The workshop covered topics such as traditional food system, food production, distribution, consumption, food crisis, food security, food sovereignty and the slow food movement. Furthermore, issues related to genetically modified organisms, globalization, global food corporates and their impact on the local market systems were also discussed and analyzed. We used to export cotton and now we don't even have our own indigenous seeds to go and buy in the market. Where is the supplement? Andhana she was talking about hundreds and thousands of varieties of rice alone, leave the other millets. But now most of the land is being now converted, even fertile agricultural land are being converted to produce cash crops, flowers, soya, corn. Okay. So where is the sovereignty of the farmer? Is the state sovereign or the people sovereign? Can there be a state without the people? So this is the question we have to think about. When it comes to food sovereignty, we are talking about producing what we want to produce, consuming what we want to consume. HMI invited Mr. Srinivas to facilitate sessions on food security in tribal and rural context. Mr. Satya Srinivas has been working in the area of development for more than two decades, mainly on tribal and rural development. His sessions have helped the participants to gain better clarity on food crisis and its related issues. During the course of the workshop, Mr. Rajendra Kumar from Andhra Pradesh, one of the participants at this workshop, enriched the learning process by sharing his experiences and strategies on food security, sovereignty and safety. Mr. Rajendra Kumar, founder and secretary of Sujana, 
a non-profit organization is doing effective advocacy work in the area of social justice, tribal rights, land rights, education, etc. Mr. Indika Pereira, the program director for the Initiative for Political and Conflict Transformation from Sri Lanka, a participant at this workshop, facilitated a session on issues of private corporation and tribal rights. Another important activity during the workshop was cook and share, where each day the participants were given the opportunity to cook their traditional food and share with others. It created an opportunity for everyone to taste and appreciate different kinds of food and also to learn new recipes from one another. How's the food? Okay. Curd rice? Yeah. Towards the end of the workshop, the participants were able to gain more clarity on issues around food and expressed their ideas in the form of posters. What we tried to make happen was to bring the participants uh, from different backgrounds, um, people who are doing social work, people who are engaged in conflict transformation work, uh, also people who are activists, activists who are working on issues related to land grabbing, issues related to special economic zones, issues related to farmers, tribals, rural poor, and uh, also people who are engaged in scholarly work trying to understand the phenomenon of hunger and uh, poverty and uh, uh, the inability to procure food for consumption. So try to get uh, lots of different people together uh, from different sectors and uh, come to an understanding uh, what the lived experiences teach us about food, uh, the quality of food, uh, how it is produced, where it is produced, what is happening to the producers, what is happening to the consumers, and uh, what is happening to the people who are uh, distributing it and uh, storing it. So, trying to understand the food cycle. so many interesting people who is like really interested for like food security and, and health and diet and, and also there are different uh, parts of India and different parts of uh, country which is uh, they sharing their experience and their knowledge which is quite helpful to my work and what I'm experiencing here like I'm learning new recipe which is like also helpful to my recipe book and all and also in my uh, experience of making food it's been an interesting workshop. It's been it's been different from other workshops because, well, I'm in India. I'm far away from home, and I'm surrounded by people with 
different backgrounds, different experience, very different from what I'm used to. Um, so I find it really interesting to see how do people think and reason about these issues of slow food, about agriculture. I'm definitely not an expert in agriculture myself. I've been to a farm once or twice in my life only, and I'm surrounded by sons and daughters of farmers who have genuine knowledge and experience. And uh, at the same time, my academic background as uh, being on the last year on my undergraduate has brought me a lot of theoretical knowledge that I can now um, try to put into practice, try to see how does it um, correlate with reality. This workshop further motivated the participants to creatively initiate certain actions to raise awareness on food issues in their respective regions. And the Henry Martin Institute extended financial support and human resources. Participants from Andhra Pradesh engaged themselves with wall painting, rallies, and street plays in six different villages. The participants from Sweden conducted a 10 days research on food security and grassroots advocacy in the East Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh. A workshop on food and health was organized in Rajasthan. A workshop on issues related to food was organized for the university students in Sri Lanka. With support from HMI, six posters were created by Arun and Giri from Manipur. and the Conflict Transformation Team also designed and produced T-shirts. This initiative by the Conflict Transformation Team is just a beginning and we are strengthening our network with rights scholars, activists and organizations. The CT team will be following up with yet another workshop on slow and fair food in the month of December 2011 and we will implement 15 action plans in different regions of India and Global South during the year 2011 to 2014. HMI would like to thank ICCO and Kirki Nakche for their generous support in funding this workshop and the several action plans that sprouted from this workshop.